2023 is shaping up to be a monumental year of change for crypto, and nowhere is that more true than in regulation. Most of the world is waiting to see what the US does with new rules for the sector, but increasingly that looks like it might be some way off, and other jurisdictions are sensing an opportunity. And at the front of that queue is Hong Kong. Just months on from reopening after the pandemic, Hong Kong has flung its doors open to Web3. This is the FOMO Asia Genesis Conference. It's one of several summits being staged in the city this spring, all of which are focused on the crypto and Web3 sectors. The timing is no coincidence. It comes right in the middle of big changes to the Fragrant Harbor's digital asset regulatory regime. Last month, the government announced a public consultation on the new rules. Days later, the financial secretary, Paul Chan, said in his budget, the government was also investing in Web3 tech. He added, quote, the third generation internet Web3 currently in its startup period has the same huge potential. We must keep up with the times and seize this golden opportunity to spearhead innovation development. Already scores of companies have been making plans to do business here as a result. Earlier this week, the Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury, Christopher Hoy, said that some 80 foreign and mainland Chinese companies could move here. That includes major global brands like Kaiko, Huobi, and Gate.io. A three-month deadline for applications reportedly has firms rushing to get in and set things up quickly. That raises the prospect of the crypto landscape in Hong Kong shifting dramatically by the summer. They would have to get servers, they'd have to move their exchange over or a copy of it and start operating. Uh, in Hong Kong to show a reasonable operation that can be grandfathered in. If not, you start your application from scratch if you miss that June uh, deadline. For some local crypto firms, change has been overdue. Previously, some had lamented the pace of that change, in particular in the wake of China's cryptocurrency ban in 2021. But now though, things look to be moving apace. In the past, for example, you know, when we see companies like for example, FTX is leaving Hong Kong, right? We're going to say, oh, wow, this is a company and, you know, they leave Hong Kong because they don't like the framework here, right? But now as, as we look back is, you know, if they haven't left and, and fully complies with, with the regulation in Hong Kong and none of those will happen. Now, though, firms like Signum Digital say they're glad the city has tried to get its rules right. CEO Samson Lee says that what's been most important is that companies like his know where they stand. As long as there's a, a clear regulation framework, people know the rule of the games and then they will derive the best strategy to work around, right? So, um, and it's very subjective sometimes whether it's, it's too strict or or not too strict, or some, some people might think even too loose. <laughs> the new rules focus heavily on investor protection and for many of them, they look pretty similar to the ones already governing traditional financing. Former Hong Kong securities regulator Angelina Kwan told us this week the only differences cover a listing committee for tokens, a wallet system, and the need for an external advisor. Repeatedly, we've heard sources, though, warning about the need to learn lessons from FTX. And for regulators, this is why the emphasis must be on safety. The rules were put in place to protect people from an FTX. And I think the most important thing is, number one, integrity. And that's where the fit and proper comes in place, that you have to have integrity. So far, the new rules are focused on licensing. Stablecoins will be included in that, but it's not currently thought that algorithmic stablecoins are going to be allowed. The government, though, is also looking to raise money for some of its ESG goals by tokenizing green bonds. This has clearly impressed many in the community here, and some have said that by becoming a token issuer itself, the government is proving it is not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. If we are moving forward to a vision of mass adoption of digital asset, we cannot just focus on the crypto community, right? We have to bring in the rest of the world, the rest of the world of the investor. One thing the rules don't cover, at least for now, is non-fungible tokens. The global multi-chain economy is already a key component of the whole of Web3. The new Forecast 500 index shows that the sector has been struggling so far this year, despite the recovery in crypto prices. If Hong Kong's current rule changes go smoothly, however, plans for NFTs could yet come soon. I think with this initial rush, they're focusing on this license first. 
and then they'll get it out. Because everybody's interested in tokenization again now, which is good. Um, and hopefully there'll be better assets and better things to actually um, uh, tokenize. Other jurisdictions in Asia are also moving ahead with their own plans for crypto change. Check out our recent episodes on what's happening in South Korea, Japan and Singapore, to name a few. The question echoing through the halls here at the FOMO Asia Genesis Conference, though, is whether Hong Kong could now become a global leader in crypto. I see there are a lot of potential for Hong Kong to become the future global leader of Web3, uh, especially in Asia. So uh, I think uh, the definition depends on really uh, the numbers of uh, projects, the number of VCs and the number of users. Right now here, we, we see there are a lot of people in this uh, Hong Kong Institution Center. I think it's a very good start. I wouldn't say we are already the leader, but we will become one of the leaders, especially because I think Hong Kong has opened up uh, a lot, uh, like in terms of the borders and in terms of the policy, which is really important because we see what happened on the other side of the world, where you know there are a lot of events going on and the government has to consider, not because of just crypto, but you know, what is the whole implication on the financial system. All right, that's it for this episode. We'll be at another conference here in Hong Kong next week with more on the intersection here between digital assets and traditional finance. In the meantime, like and subscribe to this video and let us know your thoughts on what's going on here and elsewhere in the comments below or wherever you're watching.